Well, hello, everyone. This is Gabriele Zanini, and together with Charles Januzzi, we are going to present Using Films for an Online Extensive Listening Library. In ELT, listening and reading can be distinguished according to what types of tasks learners are asked to do. While a number of various goals could be singled out, a major contrast is often drawn between intensive versus extensive tasks. In classroom, our activities are designed in a way that monopolizes the intensive aspects. Those two, we have reading in one hand and listening in another hand, and we can use the same features, the same way to explain that reading and listening can be divided in tasks that are intensive or extensive. So, for example, a class that's centered on preparing students to take a toll for or IELTS will emphasize intensive listening and reading questions like the ones on the tests. What we want is to show different ways of using extensive, lead, extensive listening tasks that will be more meaningful for students. The problem is that the domination of those intensive tasks in the classroom will lead the students to situations that they are exposed to a foreign language, in this case, English, in a confined situation with the major objective as reading or listening just to answer a question. So with that in mind, we were questioning ourselves in is there a way that we can increase the incidental exposure of the students with English in a way that they will feel more motivated, that they will engage more with the, the language learning activities in the classroom and hence improve their exposure and improve their language acquisition. Both Charles and I, and I believe that the majority of you, also work in situations where English is not the native language spoken outside of the classroom. We work in EFL situations, we work in EFL contests where students have the input of the language in the class and when they step out of it, there is not a lot for them to engage with meaningful and intensive kind of tasks and extensive kind of tasks outside of the classroom. Right. Amongst all of the activities, one that has come to our attention is the interest in extensive reading. Every school has a program based on extensive reading. So students read at their own pace, they go from one level to another and they are exposed to a more natural way of learning the reading. But in, on the other hand, there's not a lot of attention, there's not a lot of um, programs direct to extensive listening. With that in mind, we would like to propose and explain a method or an, in a systematic way of how to create an extensive listening program. And the beauty of it is using no cost materials. And those no costs or very low budget materials, they are all available online. And we will be discussing and we'll be sharing with you some of those materials, which are open sources, free software, public domain films, English language scripts that all can be used to add and to create this listening program that can be used in classroom, right? We also want to propose this program to be as part as a, as a taught course or that students can use that material to study by themselves. Uh, one way of doing that is having the collection of those materials established in a Google Drive library, and then you can add that Google Drive, that library to your Google Classroom, right? So 
um, I will pass the baton now to Januzzi, which will explain a little bit more between a little bit more of the difference between intensive and extensive listening. Anytime you listen for a longer period of time and you're not answering questions about it. Now, one key distinction is spontaneous communication versus scripted language. So just as we emphasize intensive tasks in English language teaching, we also tend to use a lot of scripted language. The problem with a lot of scripted language is it lacks natural characteristics. And maybe that is kind of demotivating as well. It seems childish or demotivating. So we're, we're proposing that this is a nice compromise using films um, present scripted language more like it were natural, spontaneous communication. And so we're proposing the use of feature films, you know, films with nar narratives, characters, and so on for extensive listening. And because so many films are now available in the public domain, including online. So public domain films online are a really great source, but you also might have them lying around um, you know, like on optical discs, VCDs, DVDs, and so on. And so we've listed some possible sources to find the content that you need for your library. Here's an example, and then there were none very famous Agatha Christie mystery story and uh, a 1945 classic film. And here's another one we've put in the library. Uh, students have enjoyed it. It's a very Hitchcockian film with Audrey Hepburn and Cary Grant, Charade. And then the John Wayne comedy Western, very lighthearted film, McClintock. Now you, you do need to get going with some software. So DVD Shrink can help you crack and rip optical discs. Uh, that's a title that's not been developed lately. It's out of development, but Make MKV will also decrypt and rip optical discs. And then Handbrake allows you to edit the uh, content in various ways. If you're going to go online to get content, the best title would be the 4K Video Downloader. And as for subtitles, subtitles can be extracted from optical discs like DVD and Blu-ray, but um, the, the easiest way is really to get them online. So if you do a search at these sites or just do a search at Google or DuckDuckGo or Yahoo and so on, you can find the um, titles with their .srt files. Those are the extracted subtitles. And here is a master list of the software and links to it. So we'll post those links so you can get to the software more quickly. And one more consideration in terms of text would be to get the uh, scripts or screenplays. And these are widely available online in the form of HTML and in PDF. And then um, maybe where you are, like if you're in Japan, they market bilingual screenplay books for public domain films that include the DVD. They have the film with them, no subtitles, but there's a bilingual screenplay in the book with lots of cultural and linguistic notes explained as well. Okay, then the key procedures here would be preparing the film and getting it into the library. And then the next set of procedures would be what students do with the film. Now, these are tutorials that could take an hour each uh, to really give the, all the details, but we've given a basic outline for each one. So you get your film, whether it's online or rip it from a disc, um, and you get your subtitle file, like an SRT file that you can download. Um, then you would use Handbrake, um, make three master copies of the film, one with um, the student's language in subtitles, like for example, Japanese, and then English subtitles, and then no subtitles. Then you can use Handbrake to edit those into shorter segments. So like 20 minute segments or even 10 minute segments for, for beginning level. So you break the film up into these segments. And then there's the procedure, what do students do with the, the content that's in the library online? Well, it's at Google Drive and they access it and they can stream it or they can download it. And they, the basic procedure is to watch a segment and then watch the segment um, 
the first time they watch it, it would be with Japanese subtitles, then read the corresponding part in the screenplay, and then watch the same segment with English subtitles. And then final, finally, the final challenge is to watch it with no subtitles. And I will turn the mic back over to my co-presenter. Thank you very much, Charles. So where do we go from now? Beyond extensive viewing and listening. Using films for extensive viewing and listening also op opens up the opportunities for more intensive language study and practice. For example, in Japan, in Brazil, in Malaysia, and other countries where English is not the spoken language, using stretches of film script for close listening is an extremely popular listening practice activity. In Brazil, for example, um, one of the activities we use, we get a short dialogue from a part of a film and we ask, if this is for beginner students, we ask, we remove some of the verbs and we ask them to use, to add verbs that are related in meaning. Um, films can be used for activities that result also in writing tasks. It could be a character description, it could be plot summaries, it could be short reviews. You could ask students to recreate a dialogue. You could ask students to recreate a conversation between uh, two characters in a very important scene. Uh, or you could use a, a, a reveal or a film reveal and create a debate in the classroom. Another extension is to create vocabulary exercises, quizzes, word lists, and tests based on the corpus of a given film. So the number of activities is endless. In conclusion, uh, in ELT, listening and reading are modes of communication that can be distinguished based on what learners are asked to do. A major contrast is go in goals is drawn between intensive versus extensive activities. Classroom activities are typically centered on intensive aspects. So with all of that in mind, we want to make a shift for, from more intensive tasks to more extensive tasks. Hence our question, is there a way to increase the incidental exposure of students with English through listening in a way that it will lead to greater language acquisition. So how can we do that? And then one way of doing it is using films, right? And based on those films, we can expand, we can create more extensive tasks. This presentation has tried to explain a way to create an extensive listening program using free materials that are available online, such as freeware softwares, public domain films, English language scripts, and multilingual subtitles. We gave you, through Charles' presentation, we gave you some ideas of softwares, some ideas of public domain films that you can use and adapt to your classroom settings and to your context, to your reality, and change that in resources and you can add to your listening library. Moreover, the proposed extensive listening program can be done entirely online. It can be part of a taught course, or it can also be a way to enable and manage effect effective independent study. So you can use all those films, you can use all those activities, and then you can create a space on your online a teaching platform, you could use your Google Drive, you can use the extension of your Google Classroom, you could use Moodle, any platform that you're using, and then you can make those materials available. You can use it as um, part of your listening classes, and you can also assign those tasks to your students as part of their courses or 
just as a part of their enhancement for the English language um, activities that you propose in the classroom. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you do have a lot of questions, both Januzi and I, we are available to answer all of them or even to bring you new questions related to it. To it. And I hope you, you can make good use of our ideas and that is useful not only to you, but your students and in a way that we can uh, make English language teaching and learn more realistic, natural and effective for everybody. Thank you very much. Have a good day.